We arrived here at this printing press at 10.30 in the morning on a Wednesday. And I came here with an office mate of mine, that's the one in black <laughs> over there, and his name is Rodelio. And we came here because we had to approve the color proofs of the desk calendar that we were supposed to be doing for the office. This printing press is located in Quezon City and I will talk a little bit about the printing press towards the end of the video but for now I just wanted to show you the machine that they are using for our project. It's the Heidelberg Speedmaster and it's an offset machine and right here you can already see the four different modules that they're using for the four different inks that compose the entire design. It's CMYK, C is cyan, M is magenta, Y is yellow, and the first one is K, which is also black. There we have the operators um, cleaning out the plates for the test runs. They have been doing this even before we arrived here at 1030, and they were not able to get the color uh, perfectly at this point so it was a good thing that we came over there at 10 30 so they were able to get the colors as close as possible to what we wanted but it wasn't quite right yet but let me talk about the machine first I think that this is very fascinating old analog machines always fascinate me and I think that these things should never go out of style or they should never be phased out because um, the technology behind it is very very reliable it is not very exact I mean it's not going to give us the exact same output consistently the same as digital but um, I think that this is in general more reliable and more cost efficient than digital. So they've already turned on the machine and this is the feed. This is where all of the paper goes in and I just wanted to show you this thing again right here. Um, it is constructed of a series of tubes and metal spikes and two of the ends have suction cups on them that uh, the, the paper sticks to so the suction lifts the paper up and then a separator sort of um, um, encourages the separation of the sheets before another uh, moving part with suction cups on them um, propels the sheets forward. One of the operators are standing by at that end to see that the paper is feeding through properly and as you can see there are a series of wheels that manage the sheets and make sure that they're not jammed although every once in a while we do get a jam like that one um, in which case the operator does what he has to do um, sometimes he takes out a jam and if the paper is not really ruined it's, he saves it for a different printing batch but if the printing is ruined, then he has to discard that. Um, so he, he tried to feed everything through again and made sure that the paper was feeding correctly. And later on, I'm also going to turn on the original sound of the video clips so that you can hear how noisy it really is inside this <laughs> production floor. So here we have the module for the black ink or the K and as you can see the plates are working and the paper is fed through there and the purpose of this module is to print the black ink onto the sheet but that's not done yet because only the black elements and the black portions are printed on it and then we move on to the C or the cyan module in which all of the cyan elements are overprinted on the black that's already printed before it. And then the third module is for the magenta. It overprints all of the magenta elements on the cyan and the black that were already printed in the modules before it. And then the last module is the the yellow one. And that's the last one. It it 
prints all of the yellow elements on the magenta and the cyan and the black that came before it. So that's really why offset printing requires that graphic artists render all of their color profiles in CMYK because this machine breaks all of those down into actual C and M and Y and K. And then this is the end where everything comes out. Um, the printed sheets come out here and they're held at a platform with a stopper and then they take the sheets out and check them. Now. The woman here is named Agnes. She was the one overseeing the operations on that morning and she was just marking down some spots on the printout that had very small black lines on them that need to be removed or adjusted. And then we also looked at all of the um, portions on the printout and compared them to the other sheets that came before because the thing with offset is that sometimes it takes um, it you need to run the machine a little longer and print on a bunch of sheets before it before the ink can actually adjust into more consistent levels like this one we're pointing out in the December 2018 the center of the 2018 is a little bit more yellowish than what it should be so on the next run that is going to be adjusted and our basis for judging the colors is this digital print right here the smaller one that is propped up by magnets and we're comparing them manually to the printouts at the bottom that actually are coming from the machine the smaller one came from a digital printer and the bigger one came from the machine and what we're trying to achieve is to come up with a printout that contains the exact same colors on the digital printout. So that is the goal for these tests. And as soon as we get an exact color match, I'm going to sign the sheet and then we can proceed with a final print run. At some point, the operators decided that it was the black ink that was giving trouble to all of the others so they made a very very clever adjustment to the um, ink that they fed into the black module what they did was combine blue ink or the cyan ink with black so as to make it not appear black so that when they adjust it manually it won't overpower the entire print out and doesn't make it too dark and it doesn't give it that uh, strange gradient in the yellow. I actually stepped up into the module so I can see the tray that held um, some of the ink that would be fed through into that uh, through the cylinders and this is the actual ink that goes onto the sheets of paper that are being run under those plates. And this is the module dedicated for black ink. This is the other one for the cyan ink and the magenta ink and the yellow one that you can see further there. After that trial run, we checked the colors again and it was closer. It was much closer to what we wanted it to be. There were still minor imperfections in the print, like that yellow, the yellowish line there on the December 2018 part is still there so it must be removed and then the June 2018 had sort of like a reddish thing over it that I could see with my eyes you might not see it on camera and this is how they make the adjustments they press the buttons that aligns with where the imperfection is or where the adjustment needs to be done and this is all done with those analog push buttons and the the bars light up to indicate the color levels but more or less it's it's really just that so every few sheets or so they would take it out and then they would compare it to the digital proofs um, that was on there and make the adjustments with the buttons and then take out a sheet and I mentioned this uh, at near the beginning of the video the reason for having to do this is because the machine sort of uh, evens out all of your applied changes after a few sheets have been run. So there is 
a number, a few sheets that act as buffers for the adjustment. So the, the key really is to um, keep adjusting and to keep testing until the desired color levels and, and consistency is achieved. I looked at every single sheet that they took out for comparison and then um, looked very closely at everything making sure to refer to that digital print that we have to um, use as our basis for everything and it, it just kept getting better as we went along and made the necessary adjustments it just kept getting better so we just kept repeating the same process printing out a few and then checking and then making the adjustments via the buttons and then checking and then printing and then adjusting and it's pretty much the same thing and we did this starting from 10 30 in the morning and then we took a break for lunch at around before 12 and then we got back at one o'clock and then resumed the thing <laughs> and then at around 2 30 we were finally able to achieve the perfect combination of inks that were the correct levels and everything was consistent and everything was even and at this point I already signed one of the sheets that came out of the machine that was as perfect as possible as perfect as we could make it and then we took down the digital print that was on there and replaced it with a sheet that had my signature on it and that will be the trigger for the final print run of about, I don't know, 2,000 copies of this project. And here's Agnes again at this point to make sure that everything was okay. And we went ahead and printed the first 300 or so sheets with the correct color. And they are going to continue this from now on because it's already like 2 30 or almost 3 o'clock in the afternoon and we still had to get back to the office and this is just all of the odd numbered pages in the project we are going to go back on the next day to do the same process but this time for the even numbered pages which will be printed on the flip side of those sheets that you see right there this is why it's important to print all of these sheets correctly on this day because on the next day we are going to be printing on the other side of that sheet. Here we are back in the printing press on the next day and this here is the digital proof of the even numbered pages that are to be printed on the flip side of the sheets that we just printed the previous day. So um, here it is they've already laid down for us one sheet that came from the machine and we are looking at it closely under proper lighting and they were discussing to me that the red area on that painting over there is kind of wreaking havoc on the red um, elements of everything else but they were able to find a way to fix that before we arrived we arrived at 10 o'clock in the morning so they had ample time to deal with that and now uh, they were already preparing the um at this point i've already actually signed the print proof as you can see in my signature over there um so we were just making the fine tuning and the adjustment using the buttons again to make sure that um the red was not overpowering everything else in the sheet i think the the difficulty with this sheet is that all of the paintings were to be printed together in one sheet but each painting should still appear as truthful as possible to the actual colors of the painting in real life so that was really the challenge here it was really just the red that was giving us problems but everything else was okay and I really admire the operators for really doing this with me, um, being very, very detailed about everything, making sure that all of the colors are correct. And so that even if we had to leave them for the day, because it would take them most of the night to print out everything, I knew that they would make it a point to achieve the colors that we wanted. So this was what was going on in the press by the time we left at around 11 
o'clock or 11.30 in the morning, the operator was loading the sheets onto the machine. And you can recognize those sheets as the ones that we printed the previous day, but he's loading them right side up because he will be printing the current plates onto that side of the same sheet. And when they're all done printing everything, on both sides, they are going to laminate the entire sheet, um, both sides of the sheet, and then they're going to cut it down to size and then bind them. Let me just talk a little bit about the printing press. They are named Gorilla Trading and they have a Facebook page. You just have to search for Go Gorilla Trading and it has all of their contact details. It has the geolocation map, it has their actual address and their contact numbers, everything that you need to get in touch with them or to visit them in person. It's all here on their Facebook page and you can actually see reviews by other people. I do have to send in my five star review because I'm very happy with how they dealt with everything. Um, they haven't finished the project yet because they still have to laminate and then cut and then assemble the calendars, but all in all, I'm pretty satisfied. And before we end this vlog, I promised you that I'll let you hear the original sound that goes on and this printing press. Before leaving, we did a final check. Here is the most recent printout with front to back printing. Everything is okay, everything looks perfect. And I'm really excited to be getting the final um, product which the office is going to use. And I have to say I'm pretty pleased with myself. I designed the whole thing, I did the entire layout from start to finish. I even wrote all of the copy and the write-ups pertaining to the paintings and I had a lot of support too. My department gave me a lot of support and then the other department that actually procured this um, project, the PRFD, gave me a lot of support and then it was just my department that was tasked with the layout and design and production of everything. The office that I work for, the Corporate Communications Office and the Corporate Support Group were also very, very supportive of me, so I'm really, really very grateful. This is really how I see all of my print projects through, at least the ones that go through offset printing. I always make it a point that I am there to see the initial prints and to do the color proofing and give the signal for the final print run. And these are all of the sheets that were printed the previous day. They've done a great job so far and I'm sure they're gonna be doing a great job from here on out. And I'm really looking forward to delivering the final product to my supervisors. After this, there is lunch and then we are going back to the office. Bye.